Hey guys, insight number three, and we're in um, Alma chapter 19 for this one, which again, most people will know very, very well. If you don't, that's okay. Please familiarize yourself with it. Uh, if you've been growing up in the church and going to church pretty much the whole time, should be fairly familiar with the story. But one of the things I'm going to ask you is, is this is converted unto the Lord Abish. We're going to talk a little bit about Abish here. Um, there's a lot of characters in this, and there's incredible experiences. I said, if something like this happened in this day and age, I said that in insight number two, something like this, if this happened in this day and age, it would be world news. Huge. It would be huge. So when you read through this, what new things did you draw from this well-known chapter? What new things stuck out to you? What had me thinking is 16. It says, It came to pass that they did call on the name of the Lord in their might, even until they had all fallen to the earth. So this is after, um, like, Lamona gets taught. He's like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So he, like, passes out and having this vision, and the queen comes in, and, and that, that the king happens at the end of 18. The queen comes in here, and she says the famous line that... There's my alarm going off, that most people know with like, what do I do? Because some say he stinketh, and I don't think he stink. Um, you know, like some say he's dead, I don't, but I don't think he's dead. And Ammon says to her, look, do you want to know about why he's like this? And she's like, yeah. And so he talks to her, and she goes down as well. And um, it just, yeah, it's just a whole thing. Um, and so... This will happen. So the whole lot of the Queen and King's Court are all like on the ground having this marvellous experience of this vision of Christ and all the whole, all the goodness. And it says in 16 that um, this is the one that I stuck out to me this week as being a bit different than I had read it before. I had always read it that um, she had been taught by her father about this. She was a Lamanitish woman. Um, I'm not quite sure if that means she was a Lamanite woman or she was a Lamanite crossed with Nephite, crossed with maybe something else woman and that's why she was working in the Queen's Court, not so much as a slave but like as a consort type thing. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, I'd like to know more about Avish, but she had the faith. But I always thought it was because she had been taught by her father because that's what we're told, that she knew this because her father had taught her. But read what it says. This has got me thinking this week. It says, and it came to pass that they did call on the name of the Lord um, in their might until, even until they all had fallen to the earth, save it were one of the Lamanitish women whose name was Abish. She having been converted unto the Lord for many years on account of a remarkable vision of her father. So did she have a vision of our father in heaven or did her father have a vision and tell her it doesn't actually matter but she had the faith but that's got me thinking I hadn't read it like that before so that's why it's good to go over and over and over these stories if you're thinking you looked at this come follow me week and you went oh yeah I've got that story I know that please please read it again and go over and think of what stands out different this what hits different this week um what has you pondering deeper um so she runs anyway in 17. She like gaps it and telling everyone she can like tell. Like going household to household. Um, because she, like she knew why these people lay on the ground. She knew it was the power of God converting them. Um, and supposing that this opportunity it says in the end half of 17. By making known unto the people what had happened among them. That by beholding the scene it would cause them to believe in the power of God. This is what she's thinking. If the people could see this they'd know that Jesus is real. They'd know this. They'd get this. So she runs. Um, she runs. Therefore she ran from house to house making it known unto the people. And the people of course come to see what's happening. Because there's a large kerfuffle going on. Something's happening. Of course you go to have a look. Right? We do that now. It's called rubbernecking. You know, go past a crash. Oh, yeah, you know, like, or a fire. We'll go and look. Because we're just that kind of people. Curious, kind of weird, strange sheep, aren't we? Um, but what would you run people? What would you run to tell people of? What's good news is getting you running to excited to tell people? And I'm like, I don't know that I'd even run to tell anyone anymore. But I do get excited by some news that happen. Um, you know, maybe someone passed away. And it's not that it's good news, but it's news that I want to run and tell people. Oh my gosh, did you hear? Um, and I think if, if, if it was me in that situation, 
I would have been the same as Abish, that I would have been like, come on, I want to tell everybody, because if they could only know for themselves, like I know, they'd be so much happier and better, and the world would be a better place, and, you know, if everyone could just be a bit nicer to each other and follow Christ, it would be a Zion people, and suddenly you're getting a bit excited, and you want to go tell people. Um, much like, you know, did you hear a new Taylor Swift album's coming out? No, I don't, no, I don't have an inside track on that. Please don't DM me on that one. Um, or there's a new iPhone again. I don't even know what number iPhone we're up to, for heaven's sake. But some things get you running to tell other people the good news. So what is it that wants you to run and tell other people the good news? I would like to think it's Jesus. That is for me. I'd like to tell them more about that, more about family history, more about scriptures, more about come follow me, um, more about some artwork that I did sometimes, but that's usually based on a conference talk. So yeah, I'm a pretty much a church geek. I mean, I'm self-admitted that I'm that. But think about that. Um, and do you have people that trust you like this? They trusted that she was saying the, the thing, that this had happened. Of course, when they see it, they interpret it a little different. But, you know, do you have people that trust what you say enough that they'd come and look at least, you know, or at least inquire, right? Now, the rest of the chapter leads to the work of the Lord among the Lamanites. So, it, it talks about how um, the contention starts in 28, and everyone's gathered, and they're all like, oh my gosh, they're dead. Um, Ammon killed them. This is awful. And it causes Abish to be sorrowful. Um, it says that when she saw the contention which was among the multitude, she was exceedingly sorrowful unto tears. And it came to pass that she went and took the queen by the hand, and perhaps, that perhaps she might raise her from the ground. And as soon as she touched her hand, she arose and stood upon her feet and cried with a loud voice, saying, O oh, bless Jesus, who has saved me from an awful hell. O oh, bless God, have mercy on this people. So they, the people can then see that actually she's not dead, that she was just in this like amazing vision of like goodness of Christ. But Abish again, do you have people that trust you that much? Obviously the queen trusted her that much. Just needed it. And this is how faithful she was. Just touched her hand and just like, Queen, like you know me. And the queen's like, Oh yes I do like and, and up, you know? Um and then she like claps her hands and the king gets up and everyone else gets up and it's all good and, and they go forth and teach a lot of the Lamanites. So the rest of the chapter leads to the work of the Lord among the Lamanites. From Abish and Ammon, boldly acting and believing in Christ, we see what a difference can be made. Um, are you always going to get miraculous conversion like this? No. And are you always going to get scenes where you can absolutely prove that it was a spiritual experience? No, you're not. But you can always be bold and believing in Christ like Abish and Ammon were. They didn't back down and they loved people first. Abish would have loved the queen and, and served her, and Ammon loved the king and served him, and the difference it made um, is something we can really apply today to the love, share, and invite. And right now, President Nelson's talking about hashtag 99 plus one. Who's the one you're going to go looking for? Um, I already did one thing this week, just to one person, and, you know, it's not hard to just pick one person that's been on your mind lately. What do you do? What do you need to do to... Um, do that thing for that person, you know, like, how hard is it to go do that, um, there's something I know that I want to do tomorrow to help someone else, they said to me, hey, I had this thought, but I don't quite know how to do it, and I'm like, oh, I do, and, and that can be my 99 plus one thing for tomorrow, um, not that I have to have one every day, but there's a lot of experiences with just going for the one, and you can see that it really made a difference here, but the fact that they loved the people first, Abish loved the queen, the queen and Abish must have had a relationship for them to be like so trusting of each other and as you can read and see there, uh, Ammon built that relationship with King Lamoni and that continues on for real good stuff which we're going to go talk about soon but the difference it makes by loving people first, serving that one will make a difference not just to the one but to so many, it has the ripple effect that you just never see the end of so Think about that when you're um, teaching that this week and going over it with your families. And maybe think of some 99 plus 1 moments you can do. Alright, hang around, we're going to go over to chapter 20. I'll see you there.